Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. A whole bunch of people sent me a story that caught their attention out of Arizona, and it caught mine too. Arizona Supreme Court says Jeep can be sued over a girl's death. And the tricky part here is that the girl was not in the Jeep in the crash. A Jeep crashed into another car, and the girl was in that car. And they now, that is the family of the girl who died, want to sue Jeep. And we'll get to this. So the family of the little girl who was killed when her mother's car was rear-ended by a Jeep on a Phoenix freeway can continue her lawsuit against the manufacturer of the SUV for wrongful death because it did not install automatic emergency braking devices on the Jeep. They were available as an option But the person who bought the Jeep brand new did not buy them. Therefore, it did not have that option. Bob Christie wrote a story for the Associated Press. And the family of the little girl has filed a lawsuit against Jeep because the Jeep did not have the automatic emergency braking devices. But they were available as optional equipment. And this is from the Arizona Supreme Court. The court rejected arguments from lawyers for Jeep who said that Fiat Chrysler automobiles Uh, should not be liable here because the vehicle met all the safety guidelines from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And so NHTSA does not require that kind of braking to be installed in cars. And therefore, they say it's an option. If you want to buy it, you can buy it. But if it's not there, it's not a defect. So the decision written by uh, Justice Bill Montgomery also overturned a similar case from 2019 that said that automakers were immune to these lawsuits because of the federal agency's decision not to require the technology. So apparently, the Arizona courts had already said this kind of a suit should not proceed, but the Supreme Court of Arizona says, no, the previous case was wrong. This is how it's going to be going forward. The crash happened in 2015, and a four-year-old girl who was riding the back seat of her mother's Lexus got killed in the accident. The mother was preparing to take an exit from the Loop 101 freeway in North Phoenix when traffic stopped because of an emergency vehicle blocking the ramp. Uh, That's according to one of the lawyers. Uh, A nurse who had just ended her shift in a nearby hospital was also intending to take that same exit and did not notice the traffic had stopped until it was too late. Her Jeep Grand Cherokee slammed into the back of the Lexus, which injured the mother who was driving and killed the little girl who was in the back seat. She was the only child of uh, the woman and her husband who lived in Metro Phoenix at the time, but now live in Wisconsin. The attorney for this couple said the 2014 Jeep could have been equipped with Fiat Chrysler's version of automatic emergency braking, but it was only included as an option with a package upgrade that added $10,000 to its price at the time. Uh, The attorney says what Chrysler did was they had a safety system that the Insurance Institute of America has studied that says it will prevent 60% of rear-end collisions. It won't stop them all. It will stop 60% of them, according to the Insurance Institute. Uh, It's a massive game changer in terms of automobile collisions. He said automakers have been incredibly slow to adopt the crash prevention technology, while noting how automakers have adopted airbags and other safety features to protect occupants. The item costs automakers about $100 to install. And if you study the history of this, you'll know that, for instance, seat belts were not always in cars. Neither were airbags. And so as things like that get invented, they get invented, and then they test them. And then if they work, they put them in vehicles. And quite often they show up in vehicles before they're required. But oftentimes there comes a point where the federal government says, we've studied this, and these devices are something that ought to be in every single new car. And they'll mandate it. So that's why you got seat belts in cars today. Okay? Well, likewise, airbags. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is coming, but it's not mandated yet. So the attorney says the real tragedy here is that they option it. They option it. They take a safety feature and they bundle it together with moonroof and leather seats and non-safety features. So you can only get the safety feature if you buy the upgraded trim level. In a statement, Fiat Chrysler extended their sympathies to the family for their loss and other injuries stemming from a horrific high-speed collision caused by an inattentive driver. And that's what a lot of people are going to point to and say, well, who caused the accident? The nurse getting off her shift who didn't see that traffic had stopped was clearly traveling too fast for the conditions. And so 
to suggest that, well, yeah, but what caused the death was the missing option on the Jeep. Uh, I'm not sure that a lot of people are going to agree with that. Uh, they said, and this is Fiat Chrysler again, while we disagree with the Arizona Supreme Court's ruling on the preemption defense, we look forward to presenting our other defenses to the trial court. The preemption defense is the argument that the federal government trumps the states when it comes to things like auto safety. So if the federal government says this car is safe to sell, it can be sold. And it's not up to other states to go, well, you know something, that, that, that it's missing a feature. And in our state, we're going to require that feature. The company noted that the Jeep Grand Cherokee involved complied with all applicable federal safety standards and said that while automatic emergency braking, or AEB, is a promising new technology, it can't prevent all crashes. Lawsuits attempting to impose an autonomous feature on all vehicles can inadvertently stymie the development of better versions as technology matures. Federal regulators have not mandated the equipment. The Supreme Court's decision noted that the federal safety agency opted to forego imposing a mandate for several reasons, including that it wanted to spur innovation and because automakers were adopting the technology on their own. To the extent the administrative record reflects a federal policy about AEB technology, it is that the agency encourages innovation and desires it to be deployed more broadly and sooner rather than later. Uh, that's what the judge wrote. The case now goes back to a trial court unless Fiat Chrysler files an appeal with the U.S. Supreme Court, which they could do. Expert witnesses have already been retained. Depositions have already been taken. So a trial could happen quickly if that's the route they go. So keep in mind, the Supreme Court's not saying that these people win. They are simply saying that they get to have a trial. And a jury could come back and go, no, we don't buy it either. However, this will open the floodgates for litigation in Arizona where people who are in car accidents can look at the other person's car and go, well, were there any safety features that were available for that car that that car didn't have on it? Because then we can sue the manufacturer, the deep pockets, as we like to say. The attorney for the victim's family called automakers' failure to universally adopt automatic emergency braking a nationally important and fundamental issue. He said modeling done by experts determined that if Chrysler's version of emergency braking had been installed in the Jeep, the girl would not have died. Uh, it would have automatically braked that car, and this accident would have been a clean miss, he said. At worst, it would have been a fender bender, and most likely it would have been a clean miss. And he seems to be unaware or not mentioning the fact that other experts out there said that it worked 60% of the time. 60% of the time. And so that's not a sure thing, 60% bet. Um, but, you know, this is an argument that comes up quite a bit, and... When it comes to auto safety, there are oftentimes not clear-cut answers. So I'll give you an example. I actually knew somebody who works at an automaker, and they were talking about the idea of what happens when a vehicle rolls over. Vehicle rolls over, winds up on its roof or rolling over onto its roof, and it continues to roll. And so they talk about whether or not the roof will collapse on the car when the car rolls over. And so the question is, is there anything you can do to the roof of a vehicle to keep it from collapsing if the vehicle rolls over? Yes, there is. You can beef up all of the supports, you know, the A pillar, the B pillar, whatever. You can beef those up, and you can even beef up the roof so that the roof has more structural integrity. But, of course, putting all of that extra beefiness into things, in essence, above like the bottoms of the windows means that you're putting more weight into the car to the north end of the center of gravity as opposed to the south end, which means that the car will then be more prone to rolling over because it'll be more top-heavy than it was before. It won't cause the car to roll over, but it won't, it won't discourage it from doing so. And so that's something they have to stop and look at and go, okay, what are the odds it's going to roll over? And is the extra protection we're going to get from beefing up those pillars in the roof going to make up for the fact that we're increasing this vehicle's desire to roll over due to gravity. And, and that's one of the considerations. And there, are, trust me, there are tables of, of engineers and others sitting around, you know, sitting around a conference room discussing this and going, on the one hand, it does this, and the other hand, it does that. It's a balancing thing. Well, here, you've got the automatic braking. And I've got news for you. The idea that we've got the technology right now to control every aspect of a car to where you can get in the car, sit down and go, take me to the store and put your head down on your chest and fall asleep and wake up when you get there, we're not quite there yet. 
We're not quite there yet. We, we see stories in the news about vehicles that are, are on some form of self-driving technology, and they still hit things. They still hit things. Now, I'm surprised we don't get lawsuits from people who say, well, this vehicle could have been delivered with this assisted driving, and it was in an accident, and the assisted driving can always keep you out of an accident. Well, no, it can't. We've seen accidents that were happening with that technology being used. And so here... One expert organization, the Insurance Institute of America, says that this system will prevent 60% of rear-end collisions. Now, I don't have to explain to you that, that that's not 100%. And the bigger question is, when you're on a jury, juries get jury instructions that explain to them what the law is, what they're supposed to do when they go back to deliberate, how they reach a verdict, and so on. And one of the things they're going to be asked is, whose fault was this accident? Whose fault was it? And a lot of people are going to obviously go, well, the inattentive driver who slammed into a stopped vehicle on an exit ramp by the freeway. Is, does that person bear some fault? Well, obviously they do. Now, they'll get a jury instruction that says that you can assign fault up to 100% among different people. So in other words, it might be the driver's at fault 90% and somebody else is at fault 10%. I've heard it before where two cars hit each other, they both sue each other, and the jury comes up and goes, well, it was 70% this person's fault and 30% this person's fault. Just depends on who's suing who. Some states you cannot collect if you are more than 50% at fault in an accident because it's kind of like, well, if it's more your fault than the other person's, why are you suing them? So that's going to vary from state to state also. But I suspect what will happen if this case goes to trial. What's going to happen is they're going to be trying to explain this to the jury. And, of course, Jeep is going to be saying, well, it's not our fault because the majority of it was somebody else's fault. But when it's two defendants apportioning the jury, you know, the verdict between them, then you often get a situation where a jury's going to go, well, you know, it might be 60% the driver's fault and 40% Jeep's fault for not having the automatic braking system in there. Uh, so it's hard to say what's going to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if they take this to the Supreme Court. Because as you can imagine, uh, I've mentioned before that state court rulings are not binding in other states. In other words, you can't come into Michigan and say, here's an opinion from Arizona, you must follow it. But you can point to it and say, their reasoning is good. Since our state has not addressed this yet, you should adopt their reasoning. So across the nation is 50 states. I'm not sure how many of them already allow this, but the ones that don't, there's going to be attorneys there who are going to say, let's take a case like this and take it up on appeal and see if we can get this to be the law in our state. So facing a wave of that kind of lawsuits, it might make sense for Jeep or Fiat Chrysler or whoever they call themselves these days. Uh, to take this up to the Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, because that would rule on it one way or the other. But either way, they still have to go to trial and see what happens there. So Arizona Supreme Court Jeep can be sued over girls' death. Sent to me by Paul, Derek, Donald, Stephen with a PH, Adam, and Eric. Thanks, guys. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. When we really delve into the reasons for why we can't let something go, there are only two, an attachment to the past or a fear of the future.